Hey there, so I needed to do a quick follow-up on closures because I didn't really get to the meat of what closures really are. So closures are one that block syntax that allows you to pass around functions similar to lambdas in other languages, but it's also this kind of concept that a function within a function, that inner function that you define with inside the outer function will have access to the inner function's variables. The main thing to focus on here is that if we create a function called outer and we create a variable in outer called total and it's equal to zero and then we create an inner function called inner now this is a function within the outer function total can be referenced from inside the inner function so we can say total plus plus and that will increment total that's the first step now we're going to take this to the next step we're going to create a parameter in outer. It's going to be called how much do you want to increment by and that's going to be an integer. And instead of returning an integer, what we're going to return is a function that returns an integer. A function that takes zero parameters and returns an integer. And this inner function is going to be that thing that we return. So down here all we'll do is we'll return the inner and this inner function still needs to return the total. Now, what we'll do is we'll, instead of just incrementing by one, we'll increment by how much. So notice that the inner function has a reference to how much. So down here, if we just do a print line of outer and we increment by one, what we've returned here is a function. And if we were to run this function by assigning it to a variable, and let's say the variable or the constant, because it's not gonna change, is called um, increment by five, and that's going to be equal to the outer, and it's gonna increment by five. So now we have right here an actual function because this outer has returned the inner. Now watch what happens here, is if we call increment by five, that's gonna return five the first time it's going to return 10 the second time and so on and so forth because this inner function it has access to total after after the outer function outer has finished executing and it will continue to have a grand total of that local variable in there so we can actually keep a reference to this function and keep a running total the important thing to note is that closures are references. This increment by five is referencing this inner function here. So it has a reference to it, so it's able to run it many times and keep that reference. It is not the actual inner function itself. It is only a reference to that function. So that's why we can create a new reference to that function called increment by one, which is equal to uh, outer one and now if we call increment by one you'll see that we have now started again at one and also note that if we were to say let increment by one again is equal to increment by one we now have a reference to the original increment by one so if we call increment by one again then we're going to get five because it's this, the reference to the same inner function that increment by one is referencing. Now what's a practical use of closures? Well, I can think of a really great one and that's just grabbing something from a URL because when you grab something from a URL, that contents is not going to be available immediately. And of course you want the function to be able to exit. It's not going to wait until that's ready. So you can create a closure to kind of wait until things are ready and it's only going to call that closure when the URL has been downloaded. We can use an API to get some data. Let's use bacon ipsum, which is just a lorem ipsum bacon API. Go try it out. It's pretty funny. So here's a URL called URL to assign that to an NS URL. So we can say let uh, NS URL equal to NS URL and then we just have to pass in the string. We can just pass in the URL. So now we can create a task to go and fetch that data. So we can call this task and we can use the NS URL session dot shared session dot 
data task with URL and then we just have to pass in that NS URL that we created Since this data is not going to come back right away we need to create a closure so that this function will get called when the data is ready so we can use the trailing closure syntax to do this and this is going to return us back the data the response and the error and then we just write that in do a uh, print line to see what we get back and we can type this as an NS string so that we can set the encoding and the data as data encoding as NS UTF-8 encoding UTF-8 string encoding there we go and then we just call task dot resume now this isn't going to run because the run loop isn't running in the playground so there's other ways you can grab URLs in the playground but I can show you that this is running by opening up Charles you can see that bacon ipsum did run you can see that the meat and filler ran and here's the response but this is an issue with playground why this isn't running. This is an example of how you would use a closure because this data isn't gonna come back until the server has returned that data. Now, if you do wanna see this running, you can do it in kind of a little bit of a hacky way. You just have to get the run loop to run. And I have this in my clipboard here and you wanna run it, but you don't wanna keep it running. So you'll have to comment it out because it's just gonna keep running. But if you just wanna see what it does, you have to make a variable up here called waiting equals true and there you can see that this ran now I'm gonna comment this out because this is still running comment it back in so you can see the data did come back when you're doing a real project this is the way that you would retrieve a URL and you won't have to do this while loop to get the the run loop going it'll already be running but that's a good example of when you would use a closure is when something is going to respond but not right away even though the function has already executed completely you have a reference to this closure and in that case the function is going to have a reference to the closure to call back when that data is ready another time you'll wind up using a closure is if you're doing an animation that takes like four seconds and you want something to happen at the end you can pass it a closure that you want to run after the animation is finished running. So an animation will take four seconds. The entire function that ran the animation will be done, but after it's over, it will call the callback, the closure that you passed it to run. Another one that I can think of is sorting. A lot of times you wanna sort an array in a specific way. You have a sort function, you have some functionality that's in a closure, and you wanna sort the array in that way. So you can use the map function or the sort function of the array to pass it your little functionality, which is what we showed in our tutorial. Just like our example up here, you can use the trailing closure and you can represent the closure in any way that you want. And the most important thing is that it's readable and understandable to other developers that are going to see it. Thanks for watching. That's a couple of real world examples of where you would use closures to pass around those anonymous little bits of functionality so that things can happen asynchronously in the background it's a core feature of the framework and you'll wind up using it quite a bit. See you next time.